Hello everybody, my name is Jared Bendis. I am the Creative New Media Officer for the Freeman Center for Digital Scholarship at the Kelvin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University in glorious Cleveland, Ohio. And today we're gonna to talk about how to edit audio for free using a program called Audacity. Everything you need to know is gonna be in this very short video. God, I hope it's short. Anyway, let's get started. First, if you go to audacityteam.org, you can download Audacity, which is an audio editing program. Now, almost all audio editing programs work about the same. What's nice about this one is, is it's free, open source, and cross-platform. The best part is, is the cross-platform. So I don't care if you're Windows or Mac or whatever, you can use this software. It's a little bit different than other audio programs, but they all kind of work the same. And again, thankfully, it's free. Also today, we're going to be playing with some mixing of audio, so I figured I might as well get started by giving you some music to play with. Now, we're going to be very, very um, copyright conscious as we uh, as we start playing with these things. We want to make sure that we are not using anybody's commercial music, and we have to remember that even if we record uh, somebody else's song, that would still be a copyright violation because the even our recording of that is a copyright violation. So we want to make sure that we stay good when using royalty-free music. And there's a lot of music out there. And the king of royalty-free music is a guy named Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And if you go to his website, oh my God, does he have music for you. And it's so much good stuff here. And So he's got all sorts of music, and the best part is, is he lets you use it for free as long as you give him credit, and you're going to follow the rules when we do this. So we actually really recommend that people use uh, Kevin McLeod's website. Now, the cool part is, is if you don't want to give him credit, you can pay him, which is, of course, how he makes money. I do not know him. I just know that he is the king of internet music. But if I were to come over here and click on this, um, I could come over here and I could decide that I wanted to use it. Oh, let me go back to where it says download. Here it is, uh, download. If I go to download it, it's going to show me that for free, um, I could come over here and I have to use it with attribution. And I can download it. I can even use it commercially. And for 20 euros, I could actually not use credit him. Well, I'll choose the free license. And that means that somewhere in my project, I must cut and paste this text. There you go. You put this text in your project and you're golden. And by the way, his website is filled with music. Later on, I will mention some places where you can get sound effects in very much the same way, but we're not worried about sound effects right now. We're worried about having something we can play with. So there you go. Just to get you started, we are going to get our software from Audacity. I've already downloaded and installed it, and we're going to get some basically royalty-free music that we can play with from in Computech. It'll be links to both of these for you to play with. Let's come over here and get started. Now, you're probably hearing me, and I should sound pretty good. I will admit I got a fan in the back. You should turn your fans off, but I'm in a very warm spot, and I don't really care. But my audio sounds good because I know what my audio source is. Now, you have to double-check. What are you recording with? Now, when, I'm, when I launch Audacity, what you're going to notice here is it's going to tell you that there's a little microphone and it's going to list the microphones available to you. And if I look over here, you're going to see that my computer has three microphones available. It's got this microphone called Audio Hub, which is my really good pro-level um, podcasting kit. So I've got a microphone and all sorts of good mixing board. I've got my Realtek High Definition Audio, which is basically the built-in microphone into my computer. And because my computer has a microphone built in, sometimes it's just the microphone jack in the computer. It also has my Microphone HD Pro webcam, which of course is because my webcam has a microphone as well. And each of these has its own microphone. A lot of times we recommend that you use a headset microphone uh, those are really great if you're doing sort of, you know, personal recordings. Uh, and also you can get tabletop microphones. There's a lot of places you can get microphones that are going to work really, really well for you. I will say that you may have heard that previously the library would lend microphones. Regretfully, with COVID being what it is, we are no longer lending microphones. That being said, microphones kind of a really needed thing these days. I would say that there's two items that everybody needs. One is a microphone and one is a webcam. And believe it or not, your webcam might have pretty good audio. So you want to basically start playing and seeing around what's going to be good with it. All right, so now that we've done that, so this is going to be our source. 
It's going to ask us whether we need stereo or mono. And I will be honest with you, it's silly whether I do stereo or mono. I have a mono microphone here, so if I record stereo, I'm just going to get two of the same. But if you're recording with other microphones, if you're recording in a different environment, you may actually want that stereo microphone. And it's going to ask me how I'm going to play things back, and it's going to come over here. And of course, I've got my speakers, and that's going to, of course, what I can normally hear with. So these are the first three things you're always going to look at when you're ever working in Audacity, which is what is my source, the microphone, what is my output, which is my speakers, and whether I'm doing stereo or mono. So far, so good? I hope so. Now, let's go ahead and look at the preferences. If I come over here to Edit, Preferences, there's only one preference I want to look at right now, and that is going to be the quality preference. And the quality preference is going to be basically what type of quality we're recording at. Now, I have mine set to CD quality. When you're looking with audio, there are really three numbers that we always talk about. One of them is the sample rate. In this case, it's 44,100 hertz, which we call 44 kilohertz. And that's basically how much over time it chops up. The more samples over time, the higher the quality of the audio. If it was 22 kilohertz, it would actually sample less frequently. And of course, it would not sound as high quality. We can actually increase this. We can go to 48 kilohertz. We even go to 96 kilohertz. And you'll see people doing that. But for our purposes, since the CD is at 44 kilohertz, it's good enough for them. It's good enough for us. Now, this is the quality going this way. However, is another quality, which is the sample format, which we can do. And it's basically the measuring the quality this way. And for that, people can look at 8-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit. And I'm going to leave it at 16-bit, 6, uh, 24-bit, and 32-bit. I'm going to leave it at 16-bit because that also is a CD quality recording. Yes, you can go all the way to 32-bit, and it gets crazy how much quality you can get, but it's a lot more hard. It's a lot more difficult to edit. Is your microphone even that good to begin with? And then, of course, what are you really recording? So my recommendation is, is that you go into this and you set it to 44,100 hertz and 16-bit. And both of those will make everything much better as we go forward. Excellent. So now I'm ready to record my first sample. Now, don't worry too much about this because really the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how sensitive our microphone is. I'm going to come over to the top of the screen where there's a little red dot and I'm going to hit record. And when I hit record, you're going to see that this is the levels of my microphone. And what you'll notice is, is that I'm spiking way, way, way into the red, which basically means that I'm talking too loud. You're like, well, wait a second. That's as loud I'm talking. Well, that means my microphone sensitivity is way too high. And if you'll notice that as you're going through this all, whenever I talk really loud, it spikes the audio. And what that's going to do, it's going to cause a level of distortion. The reality of it is, is I never want to be in the yellows or the reds. When I'm speaking, I want to be in the greens. Over here, right over here, is the microphone level, and the, or they call it the recording volume. And I can lower it down. And if I lower it down, la, now at my loudest, I'm, I'm in the green, but I'm never really in the yellow. Now, if I... <laughs> If I sneeze, I'm going to spike, but that's acceptable as long as we go. Let's stop for a moment. So let's take a listen to how bad that's going to sound. Level, and the, or they call it the recording volume, and I can lower it down. And if I lower it down, la. Let's go back to when I really spiked it earlier, though. The reality of it is, is I never want to be in the yellows or the reds. Do you hear that? Can you hear that? That it's kind of like chopping. And what you're doing is, is that beautiful waveform is getting chopped and turning what's called a square wave, which is awful and sounds bad. And it actually can damage your speakers. So the first thing you ever do when you're recording, and you've probably seen people go up and go, check one, two, three. They're not checking to see if the microphone is on. They're checking the volume. And it's very important that when you test the volume of your microphone, that you're actually speaking in your normal full voice. Because you don't want to go testing, testing, one, two, three, and then record like this, because that's not going to do you any good. All right. Let's take a look at that. Let me delete that. Let me just record again and see how my volume is. Yay, there we go. See, if you notice, now no matter how loud I talk, I'm talking my normal volume, it's pretty good. Now, another thing that we need to talk about when recording audio is let's listen carefully. Do you see that? That's the air conditioning unit and fan that's way behind me. And that's what we call noise. 
And me speaking is what we call signal. So signal is here, noise is here. And the difference between the two, the wider the range between the two, the better you're going to sound. If I whisper, then the signal is here and the noise is here, and it'll be harder to hear me later on. So it's very good to keep your room as quiet as possible, turn off all the extraneous noises, and then, of course, you want to make sure that you're speaking in a loud and clear voice as possible. You don't want to yell. I don't need to yell. I don't need to yell. I don't need to yell. I need to project, but I don't need to yell. I'm in a room. I don't. Need to... Can you hear me at the back of the Internet? Not important. What's important is, is can you hear me? Am I enunciating? Am I clear? And along the way, you can see all these things that are going in front of me, which, of course, is the waveform being generated in real time as I'm recording. Pretty cool. Let me hit stop again. Now, let's go back over some of the controls over here. You've seen me already press the record button, which is the red dot, kind of universal. We have also have the black square, which is for stop. And, of course, I can rewind at the beginning, and I can play it back. Volume is, yay, there we go. See, if you notice, now, no matter how loud I talk, I'm talking at normal volume, it's pretty good. Now, another thing that we need to talk about when recording audio is let's listen carefully. All right. So we've got some of the basics down as we look through this. Now, I want to go through, remind you that we can rewind. Also, because we've got this huge waveform, if you go to the bottom of the screen, you can see that I can scroll so I can see as much as that I've recorded. And that's going to be very useful as well. I can zoom in and zoom out. Zooming in, gets show, it makes it even longer. Zooming out will kind of show you everything you've got at once. Learning to zoom in and zoom out is very important because you're going to be looking at this both from a forest perspective and from a tree's perspective. You want to be looking at it from a paragraph perspective, but also from a word perspective. Editing is a funny thing. As you learn to edit, you're going to realize that the better you get at editing, the longer it takes. The better you get at editing, the more things that you hear, and the more specific that you want to get along the way. Also, I know a lot of you are going to be recording things like podcasts. When you're editing or when you're recording, you're really going to crave those spaces between words, sentences, and paragraphs. And so even though you may be, your editing may change the way that you speak, you may start to give yourself little break points so that you can go through and edit them later. What you don't ever want to do is cut somebody off, speak over somebody, ramble immediately into the next sentence. These are the types of things you're trying to avoid as you're recording because it's going to make editing that much more difficult later on. The other thing that you want to be thinking about is these extraneous words. One of my favorite stories when I talk about recording audio is also about editing audio. There are different types of people that you work with. People who've been doing audio for a while, they don't use the um a lot. Well, um, I, um... People um because they're thinking too hard. When you're speaking to your friends, you never um. You're only umming if you're really trying, if you're in the next moment. And a lot of people know that, so they don't um. Instead, they learn to drag their words. Well, we were walking down the street one day when... And it's, you can't edit those. Now, I can get the ums gone. I can actually edit the ums out. I can't edit out those long, drawn-out words. I can edit out long, drawn-out spaces, though. So if I need to think, I'm going to think. And these are all things that you want to think about long before you record. The last thing I want to mention before we get back into the recording is this idea of what do you sound like. One of the things that I think is funny about being able to do this is being able to hear yourself so you know what you sound like. I remember many years ago I was doing a recording and I mispronounced a name. But I didn't notice it until way after I had done my recording, several hours later. And when I went to punch in and re-record just the one line, I was tired and I sounded terrible. So instead of going, probably the most fascinating thing, I was like, probably the most fascinating thing. And I was like, oh my goodness, that sounds terrible. So what I needed to do was learn to sound like me. And that's going to be the other thing, is when you play back yourself are you comfortable with the way it sounds? Can you hear your intonations? And then more importantly, can you do you? Can you actually pretend to sound like what you're going to sound like? So I can go, wow, some of those fascinating things. You don't know right now as I'm recording this, whether it's morning, noon, or middle of the night. 
You don't know if I'm awake or if I'm half asleep and I'm just pretending to be awake. I think you've got a good guess there. But the reality of it is, is you're not quite sure. And that's the point, is that editing goes along with performing. The better you perform, the less you have to edit. And both of those go hand in hand. All right, let's come over here and let's get started again and talk about how we're going to learn to edit. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit record. By the way, if you're wondering what I just did, I did something old school. I hit control A for select all and I hit delete, just like I would if I was typing in a Word document. And that's a lot of what we're going to be doing today is playing with audio like we're word processing with little pictures. For instance, hello there, how now brown cow. How now, cow brown? Sam, green eggs, I do not like, I am. Boy, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Let's see if this works. All right, let's come over here and I'm going to zoom in because I can zoom in a little bit more and let's come over here and play back. Now, if I look at the top of the screen, there's going to be this little green thing. I'm not even clicking, by the way. I'm just dragging my finger over it. And this is what's called the playback head. And I can drop it wherever I want. And I've actually, don't even drop it. I just put my, wherever I put it, press the space bar and I play. Oops. Turns out. Hello there. How now? Brown cow. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight this word. This is the word for cow. 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 I highlighted it by dragging over it just like I would in Word. I can cut it. Control X like I would in Word. Put it over here. Paste. And now. How now cow. Brown. I can grab those little space over here, which is the the, the space where I'm not speaking. And now it's going to be a little bit faster. Cow. Brown. Sam. Green eggs. I do not like. I am. So. I do not like. Put that over here. Green eggs. Green eggs. Put that over here. I think that one says, I'm going to come over here, I'll put this over here now. I do not like green eggs, Sam, I am. Now, obviously, this is being silly because you would never do this if you assemble words this way. It never really sounds right, but it's a great exercise for learning how things are separated and where things are separated. You'll never move words around this way, but you definitely will move around sentences, paragraphs, or get things out that you really don't like. That's what you're trying to do. Now, in an idealized world, you're just going to try to record larger segments. And if you were to do that, you'd record those larger segments and you would save them as individual files. Now, we haven't talked about saving yet. Let's take a moment to do that. Now, inside of Audacity, if I come over here and I save, I'm going to be saving the project. Aha. Now, uh, when you save the project, this is a project. I'm going to come over here and put it on the D drive. I made a little spot for it under video capture, audio test. All right. So this is going to be my test project. Now, the reality of it is the only thing that opens Audacity files is Audacity. This is a project. It's going to be useful if I want to go back and edit something a little more complicated later on. The reality of it is, is what I really want to do is export an audio file. There are really two, type, two types of audio files that I might want to export. A WAV file, which is uncompressed, or an MP3 file, which is compressed. Now, a WAV file is going to be a larger file. It's going to have no loss to it. An MP3 file, which is going to be smaller, is going to have loss to it, which means that if I go back and edit it later, if I go back and use it again, it's going to get iteratively worse and worse and worse. So when I'm working on my project, I might save WAV files, but when I'm only done absolutely and I have a good WAV file, then I'll make a copy as an MP3, which of course will be degraded. So I'm going to export this as a WAV file. And I'm going to go back and put it back on the D drive. D drive, video capture, and call that test project four. And I don't have to put this information in. 
and I click OK, and now I have a WAV file. And that WAV file, if I come over here, is right here, and there it is. There's my WAV file, and I can double click and listen to it in a program like VLC. Hello there. How now, cow, brown? How? All right, you get the gist. Now, it's very important when you record that you try to avoid working from a script. The reason I say this is, is that you're not a performer and reading off a script is probably going to be deadly. Most people don't know how to read yet. I mean, you know how to read, but you don't know how to read. That's okay. Some of you do. Some of you are like, I'm going to do this. But reading from a script can be awfully deadly. So instead, what we tend to tell people to do is to work from an outline. Have an idea of what you're going to want to say and then work through those various ideas. That's going to make your life a lot easier because they're going to come out more fluid. And remember, you only have to be a couple sentences or a couple paragraphs at a time. This also allows you to view things in more of clusters and segments and make sure that you feel that you're actually balancing things properly. All right, so that's pretty good. What if we wanted to add some music? Now, what's cool about this is that you can actually work with multiple tracks at the same time inside of Audacity. File, Import, Audio, and let's come back over to that folder where I had saved that wonderful clip by Kevin McLeod. And let's come over here and bring it in. And it's going to bring me another thing over here. Now, now the reason this is so big is that this is so small is because this is so big. And if I were to come over here and press play, I do not like green eggs, Sam. Let's rewind and play. Hello there. We've got a problem here, don't we? Now, we actually can have some fun here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our audio is slid up a little bit this way. And if I come over here, you're going to notice that we've been in the selection tool the entire time. That's what this tool is. But if I come over here to this, this tool, one over, one down, this is called the time shift tool, which allows me to just move the clip over anywhere in time. And this will make my life a little bit easier. Now, if I rewind again and hit play... Hello there. All right, that's pretty good. Now, I don't need all the rest of this audio, so I'm going to come over here and I am going to. Oops, wrong tool. Right, what did I just tell you? I want to be on the selection tool and I'm going to grab all of this audio and hit delete. Easy enough. Rewind. And again, nice and slow, everybody. Almost everything I show in this software, you're like, I can do that. That makes sense. You know, highlight, delete, move, slide. These are all things you're used to doing. You're not used to doing them with audio. And unlike words, which you can see, audio you have to remember. That sounds like this. I can remember it, and I can shuffle it around. So let's try it again. Rewind and play. Hello there. Interestingly enough, that's not bad. And I can even come over here and highlight all that empty space over here. Rewind and play. Hello there. How now, cow. Now, that's a pretty abrupt ending right there. And so what I want to do is I want to actually play with something called a fade in or a fade out. Now, I don't need a fade in, but I do need to fade out that audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the part of the audio I'd like to fade out. And again, if I select a little bit, it'll be a quick fade. If I select a lot of it, it'll be a slow fade. I selected this much. Effect, fade out. And you can see that it fades it down. And now we can listen to it again. Stop, rewind, play. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. And of course, I don't need all of that extra space there. So I can delete that too. And then I can come over here and keep zooming. Kind of a fun little thing there. Now, one of the other things that we're going to talk about is the sense of volume. Now, volume is what you hear. Levels is what you see. And this is a very important difference because if I were to mute my speakers right now and press play, there's still signal here and it's still making noise. I just can't hear it. And there's such thing as too loud. And not in terms of too loud, but too much signal. Remember, we saw it spiking before. But let's say that I wanted to make this part louder. I'm going to highlight it again. How now, cow brown? 
how much louder can I make it? Well, there's actually a physical limit to it. And the physical limit is I can make it as loud as possible without going over. And that's something we call normalize. Effect, normalize, just click on OK, and you're going to see that it makes it louder. And that's, of course, making it louder, which is pretty cool. Fun. All right, let's rewind and press play. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. There you go. Now, another thing that's very useful is something that we have called room tone. Except that end, that was me breathing. Let's get rid of that one. This is the sound of the room. If you ever need to insert sound, you don't want to insert absolute sound because then the room would sound dead. But if I needed to actually grab a space, copy this, put it here, now if I were to rewind, that would sound like a real space, not a dead space. Hello there. How now, cow, brown? Now, there are certain things you'll never be able to do. If you have two people speaking over each other, you're not going to be able to separate them. That's just TV and movies. If you didn't enunciate properly, you're never going to create a level of enunciation. If I say didn't, I'm not going to turn that into did. If I say did not and did not comes off as one word, I'm never going to be able to separate that, which is good, by the way, because you don't be able to do that. So there are certain things you can do, but you don't, you're not going to be so magical along the way. This is some basic audio editing, and all we need is basic audio editing. Can we chop? Can we delete? Can we move things around? Can we make things louder as needed? I think that's pretty good. I'm trying to think what else you might need. We can put the multiple tracks in. We can put in the music. We know that we can shift things around. Can I put this at the end if I wanted it? Uh, actually, that's a good one. I'll come over here. I will copy that. I will... I will come over here, I will grab just this audio, and I will put it over here, and then I will shift it back this way, and now we have an outro. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs, Sam. I am. There you go. So that's pretty much what we're looking at here. Now, I'm going to try one more time. I want to hear it one more time. I think, my, I think my video may have skipped. So just in case. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs, Sam. I am. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm very fussy about copyright. So what I would do is I would make sure to read the Kevin McLeod um, thing that he had given us. And I would also include it wherever this was posted, which is a very useful thing as well. Now, in terms of other places for sound effects, let's actually go back and maybe add a sound effect in here. I've got a couple of places I like to go to. One of them is Sound Bible. Soundbible.com. Soundbible is a great place for free sound effects, but you have to be careful. The reason is, is that when we go and look things up, let's come over here and look up the word Canon. Canon go boom, right? Now you're going to see that there's a variety of things here that you have. Personal use only. You can't use them because we're making an audio file that in theory other people can hear. And you're like, well, maybe no one's going to hear it. Let's pretend somebody is. Whenever we make audio, remember, we're making things for other people to listen to. That's why we make it. So personal use only isn't going to be, is going to be there. Instead, we'll do something like attribution. So I'm going to click on More Thunder, and I'm going to see that it allows me to download the WAV file or the MP3. I will download the WAV file, and I will put it on the computer on the D drive where I have the other one and there it is. Now it's very important that I actually go through and remember what I'm going to do. Since this requires an attribution, I need to make sure that somewhere I say more thunder more thunder by Mike Koenig via Sound Bible.
That's all it's required. I don't need a full URL. That's not going to be very useful. Just the three pieces of information. Who, what, and where. Now let's come back over here. File, import, audio. More thunder. Ooh. Now you'll see how it fades off and that's very, very good. Let's come over here and slide it over. Right around there. Excellent. And let's zoom out so we can see everything. Of course I can, oops. Now let's rewind and listen. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. Now, one of the things that we want to do is maybe make this clip louder or softer. Now, I showed you how to make it louder because you only make it so much louder. But if I want to make it softer, I could come over here and I could actually change the output gain and I could lower the gain by a certain number of decibels. And that means is... Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. Try it again. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I now, one of the things that I want to also tell you is that whenever you're mixing audio, it's really important. You ready for this? Send a sneeze. <laughs> Whenever you're mixing audio, it's very important to use headphones to make sure you know what it sounds like. It's very easy to be confused by the speakers. And in some ways, whenever you're listening to speakers, if you hear little light audio sounds, it's always going to sound like it's too light. And you're going to make the music louder and louder, the sound effects louder and louder. And then you're going to go to play it and you're going to be drowned out. And the reason it's, it happens is two things. Number one is, is you know what you're saying. Other people don't. And the other is, is it only takes a little bit to be subtle enough for people to get somebody's attention. It's a really cool effect where if you actually, if I say my name over static, it may be hard to hear. But if I say my name over static, over music, or over the sounds of like birds chirping, you'll hear me better because the brain is, is more attuned to pulling words out over birds chirping than it is over static. So when you're doing these things, subtle is better. And again, headphones make it really easy for you to know exactly what it is that you're going to be putting together as you go forward. Pretty cool, isn't it? For most of you, the products are going to be much simpler than this. For most of you, you're going to want to look at it a little bit differently. What are you going to do? You're going to sit down, you're going to record a section. If it's good, you're going to save that WAV file and you're going to record the next section. If it's good, you're going to save that WAV file and you're going to view this like a term paper. You gather your sources, but in this case, the sources are paragraphs of information that you've written and spoken. Then you're going to assemble them together, grab some music at the beginning, put some music at the end, maybe throw a few sound effects in there, save the project, and then save the WAV file. And then when you're done, save an MP3 file and turn it in. It's really straightforward. The problem, of course, is, is that when you stare at the screen, you don't know what you're looking at. I mean, you know what you're looking at. They're waveforms, but you don't know which word is which. And so you have to get good at remembering along the way what it is that you're looking at. It can be a little challenging at first, which is why we take notes and we work slowly and we basically try to enjoy ourselves while we're doing it. Some of you are going to love recording audio. Some of you are going to love editing audio. Some of you are going to hate both steps. And that's okay as well, but it's a very important skill to have. Very important. I edit audio and video constantly. And the reason I do this is, is it's very useful to be able to make things, I don't want to say perfect, but clearer. To be able to communicate, you need to be able to take things in, put things out. All right, let's listen one more time. Stop, rewind, play. Hello there. How now, cow brown? How now, cow brown? I do not like... Green eggs, Sam, I am.
Now, probably don't want it to go on that long. So what I might do is I might come over here. Oops. I might come over here, grab my selection tool, select from here over, and do my little fade out. Maybe even do another fade out. There we go. And now it'd be easier to delete that part of the audio. Then come over here and do maybe more, another fade out. I really want it to fade out pretty fast. And then... Oh, I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. All right. Now, coming back over here, when we're looking at our sound effects, when we're looking at our sources, we can use attribution. Public domain is awesome. Now, we want to be very, very careful about certain things, we want to avoid something called share alike. I don't see any share alike, so we're good right now. Share alike is a license that requires that whatever you do with it, other people get to do with it as well. A little bit confusing. We try to avoid that. Just make sure that you're using attribution, uh, but avoid things like personal use only. Now, can you use non-commercial? Absolutely. This is not a commercial use. You're actually good to go on this. If you ever decided you want to turn this into a, you know, a song, then no, you couldn't use them on commercial, but you can use them right here. Another place that we go for music is called Freesound. Um, I think it's freesound.org, right? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, freesound.org. You have to have an account on this website, but it's completely free. And if you go there, you're going to find, oh my goodness, I were to come over here and type in Canon. Canon go boom. You're going to find lots of goodies. I don't like that one personally, but. And the same sort of thing. If you found something that you liked, you'd click on it and you would look up to see what license they have. And you would say Creative Commons Zero. That's public domain. You're golden. We really want to avoid the ones called Share Alike. Let's see if I can see ones with Share Alike. Share Alike, by the way, has a little, little, um, little arrow than a circle. I'm not a big fan of that license with student projects, especially. Uh, but so far, we're going to jump ahead. You're not going to see a lot of them on here. You're going to find that the people who upload the files to these audio websites are a little more generous than when we do things like our clip art and our photo websites. People a little bit more fussy, as it were. So again, another great website for finding royalty-free stuff. And there's a lot of good stuff out there for putting things together. Keep track of your files, though. It's really important when you download something to go, all right, where, what is the name of the file? Where did I get it from? What's the license? So that later on you're trying to go through your history and trying to remember what it is that you've done. Trust me, it makes a big difference. All right, let's do that last thing I mentioned again. File, save project, save project. Oh, it's done. File, export as WAVE. And when I do that, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to overwrite my old one. And it uh, comes over here. And I, actually, I'm going to go back to that real fast. I over, I, I did that really, really fast. I didn't mean to do that fast. I want to show you what it said. Export is wave. And I'm going to hit save. And what does it say? It's going to overwrite the old one. And it's going to say, your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file. And because all the files were stereo, all, some of them were stereo, it's going to make one file out of it. And then I'm going to click on OK, and it's going to save the file for me. Then lastly, I'm going to come over here and do File, Export as MP3. Now, MP3 files are amazing. And depending on the settings you use with an MP3, it can be virtually identical to the waveform, but it does actually lose data along the way. And if you come over here, you're going to see Standard Quality, You've got medium quality, extreme quality, insane quality. Uh, the reality of it is, is that for the most part, even with music uh, spoken or spoken words, standard quality is fine. I would not go to insane quality, but if you wanted to go to extreme quality, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I hit save. It's going to mix it down. And this time it's actually going to take a little bit of time. Look how long that's up. It actually takes longer to save the MP3 than the WAV file. I know that it didn't really take longer, but in your file, if your project is several minutes long, it could take more time. And that's because it's compressing and throwing away data along the way. If I come back over here, what you're going to find is that the WAV file is 3.2 megabytes, but the MP3 file is 492 kilobytes. So a great amount of savings. And hello there. How now?
cow brown. How now cow brown? I do not like green eggs. Sam, I am. All right, not my most masterful thing, but then again, that's not what you tuned in for. You tuned in for some good old-fashioned tactical training. Now, let's follow, um, end this with a couple things. Audacity is a great program. It's a little bit different than other audio editing programs. If you're working programs like Audition, which is a great Adobe product, it'll work a little bit differently as well. But the fundamentals are still the same. We highlight things, we move things, we make things louder with normalize, we make things smaller by changing the gain, we export WAV files, we export MP3 files, we bring things together, and when we're recording, we always set our levels. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. My name is Jared Bendis. I'm the Creative New Media Officer for the Friedman Center for Digital Scholarship at the Calvin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University in glorious Cleveland, Ohio. If you have any questions, be sure to pass them along and I'll try to answer them in future videos. Thank you.